every once in a while we have the opportunity to hear from one of the members of our spiritual community about how God is at work in their life. And I noticed on the sign-up sheet, if there's a sign-up sheet in the lobby, if you would like to give a testimonial, sign your name. And there was the name of Stephanie Harnack, one of the most brilliant, creative friends I have in the entire world. And so I called her immediately. This was Thursday. And she said, yes, please help me welcome the wonderful <laughs> Stephanie Harnack. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, hi, everyone, and happy Mother's Day. Um, in Unity, we tell our children, you are God's perfect child, and I love you just the way you are. Sometimes, however, the veil of our human understanding is so thick that it's hard to see the perfect spiritual being that lives within us. It's difficult to truly remember that we are not separate from God and that a perfect, beautiful Christ spirit dwells within each and every one of us and is as close as our very breath. My mother unity and my children have been teaching me this truth my entire life my earliest memory of sunday school is not actually of sunday school it is of splashing in the bathtub and singing a hymn that i had learned and the hymn w had words in it like the lamb of god the blood of the Lamb of God has washed my black soul white as snow. And I, <laughs> I actually don't remember the, the real hymn, but I remember my mother standing, looking in the mirror, putting on her lipstick, and doing this slow, slowly I turn, step by step, look, at me, and I, I really thought I was gonna get in trouble. And she knelt down beside me and she said, what did you sing? That song is garbage. <laughs> and, and, and you are not, you do not have a black soul. You are a little child and you cannot have a black soul. And, and don't you ever sing that again. You are a beautiful child of God. And you are perfect just the way you are. There is nothing, nothing dark about you. And I don't want to ever hear that again. And I didn't go to that Sunday school again either. I, I, I loved church, though. As a child, I, I loved church. And luckily my mother allowed us to go to any church and I went to churches all the time, every kind that you can imagine. They were all traditional, but I was there. And as long as they didn't talk about damnation, hell, or sin, we got to stay for a while. Um, but nonetheless, I have been, I was looking for my spiritual home forever. And going to different churches, I always heard a message that I had to translate because traditional churches didn't quite believe the way I believed. They were close, but it wasn't quite the message. And the message that I believed, that I was raised believing, was that God loved me no matter what, that it was unconditional, and that there was nothing I could do that I could not be forgiven for and that I would not be loved and also, I was raised to believe that there was no such thing as an entity of evil. And that the only hell was one that I would create myself. And so I looked, yearning for a spiritual home. And when the time, when I was about um, 
well, I was 26, actually. I wasn't about. I was. Um, I came to Unity by the Sea in Santa Monica. And beside the door on the wall was a plaque. And when you entered, and it said, A School for Practical Christianity. And in the prayer chapel, on these beautiful walls um, that were all wooden, were carved three phrases. And on one wall it said, be still and know that I am God. And in front it said, the only sin is separation from God. And on the side it said, the kingdom of heaven is within. And I was home. I knew I had come home. Um, everything good in my life, uh, in truth, it, absolutely everything good in my life comes from my affiliation for, with unity. Um, here is where I heard all the, all the things I needed to hear to know how to be a Christian and live a practical everyday life. Unity taught four things that I could do. Number one, love God with all your heart and all your mind. Number two, love each other unconditionally. And number three, don't judge. And for those things that you cannot help but judge, forgive them. Forgive, forgive, forgive. I could do that. I could do that. And then they taught one other thing that was familiar to me, but hard to do, and that was, you are God's perfect child, and I love you just the way you are. And that was important because I ended up having children, and, you know, you need to tell them that. <laughs> Sometimes, however, this is hard to do. And my children, Matthew and Daniel, who's right there, taught me over and over again that perfect does not mean that you look pretty and you're in great shape. And it also means that no matter how it looks, it's in divine order. And sometimes that doesn't feel how it is, but it still is in divine order. And I loved being a mom. Today's Mother's Day, I loved being a mom. It's my best, most favorite job. And um, my children made it that way. However, when my kids were small, I was alone a lot. And um, because John was away on, on business, <coughs> production business, and um, so I was left to run two companies nine employees, my, our two kids, and five animals. And some days it got really, really grueling. So one of the days that chaos was reigning supreme, um, I took the boys out to, lunch, to dinner, and we went to Bob's Big Boy. Does anybody remember Bob's Big Boy? I love that place. It is a mildly kid-friendly place, and uh, they had these big, big booths, and... Um, we went in, but before we went in, I said, okay, look, you guys, you have to be good. Promise me you are going to be good. If you're not good, we're, we're going to go home and no dessert. And so, okay. And so we went in, and uh, Danny was three and Matthew was seven. And Matthew was a little hero. He was just so good. And so he sat down quietly, and he started to color, and he was just this little prince who was trying to get his brother on board with him, and Daniel started climbing the window treatments immediately. And I turned into the mommy monster. Get him! Get him! Get him right now! And it got louder and louder, and Daniel's climbing up. And the people around us were staring, and I finally I slapped the table. 
And I said, you promised, you promised you'd be good. You lied, you promised, you broke your word. Daniel jumps to the windowsill because he was like halfway up the wall. He turns and he looks at me and exasperated. He goes, mommy, I am being dud. Now he couldn't say any of the back of the word, you know, his back of the throat words, sounds. So um, that dud is good, just so you know. So mommy, I am being dud. I am a perfect child of Dot. <laughs> and the people laughed. The people who were staring, they laughed. And I laughed because in that moment, he reminded me that no matter where we are, no matter what's going on in our lives, and no matter how we feel, we are all perfect chides of Dodd. And I, I needed that. And so today, I want to remind you that you are always a perfect child of God. And um, I want to say happy Mother's Day, and God bless us, everyone. We are so blessed. Thank you, Stephanie.